Section 4 of the Aesop for Children. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Catalina Watt. The Aesop for Children by Aesop. The Bundle of Sticks. A certain father had a family of sons who were forever quarrelling among themselves. No words he could say did the least good, so he cast about in his mind for some very striking example that should make them see that discord would lead them to misfortune. One day, when the quarrelling had been much more violent than usual, and each of the sons was moping in a surly manner, he asked one of them to bring him a bundle of sticks. Then, handing the bundle to each of his sons in turn, he told them to try and break it. But although each one tried his best, none was able to do so. The father then untied the bundle and gave the sticks to his sons to break one by one. This they did very easily. My sons, said the father, do you not see how certain it is that if you agree with each other and help each other, that it will be impossible for your enemies to injure you? But if you are divided among yourselves, you will be no stronger than a single stick in that bundle. In unity is strength. The Wolf and the Crane a wolf had been feasting too greedily, and a bone had stuck crosswise in his throat. He could get it neither up nor down, and of course he could not eat a thing. Naturally, that was an awful state of affairs for a greedy wolf. So away he hurried to the crane. He was sure that she, with her long neck and bill, would easily be able to reach the bone and pull it out. I will reward you very handsomely, said the wolf, if you pull that bone out for me. The crane, as you can imagine, was very uneasy about putting her head in a wolf's throat. But she was grasping in nature, so she did what the wolf asked her to do. When the wolf felt that the bone was gone, he started to walk away. But what about my reward? called the crane anxiously. What? snarled the wolf, whirling around. Haven't you got it? Isn't it enough that I let you take your head out of my mouth without snapping it off? Expect no reward for serving the wicked. The Ass and His Driver An ass was being driven along a road leading down the mountainside, when he suddenly took it into his silly head to choose his own path. He could see his stall at the foot of the mountain, and to him the quickest way down seemed to be over the edge of the nearest cliff. Just as he was about to leap over, his master caught him by the tail and tried to pull him back, but the stubborn ass would not yield and pulled with all his might. Very well, said his master. Go your way, you willful beast, and see where it leads you. With that he let go, and the foolish ass tumbled head over heels down the mountainside. They who will not listen to reason, but stubbornly go their own way, against the friendly advice of those who are wiser than they, are on the road to misfortune. The Oxen and the Wheels A pair of oxen were drawing a heavily loaded wagon along a miry country road. They had to use all their strength to pull the wagon, but they did not complain. The wheels of the wagon were of a different sort. Though the task they had to do was very light compared with that of the oxen, they creaked and groaned at every turn. The poor oxen, pulling with all their might to draw the wagon through the deep mud, had their ears filled with the loud complaining of the wheels and this, you may well know, made their work so much the harder to endure. Silence! the oxen cried at last, out of patience. What have you wheels to complain about so loudly? We are drawing all the weight, not you, and we are keeping still about it besides. They complain most who suffer least. End of section 4 Recording by Catalina Watt, London Please visit seenthefuture.blogspot.co.uk